but let, let's look for one where you can really see the sternocleidomastoid. Okay, here you go. So here's here's the same thing, the same muscle that you were trying to describe, right? Mm -hmm. But look how it's like coming from the back of the like the skull all the way to the front of the, the center of the clavicle. That's mm -hmm. because that neck helps us basically stabilize our, or that that muscle helps us stabilize our neck along with many other muscles, right? But it's one of the bigger ones, right? Right. And it helps maintain the balance and say the same thing with the clavicle. The clavicle does a lot of that, or not the clavicle, the trapezes, you know? And yeah. so muscles, like look at this, this really sketch. I think this is like a sketch sculpt of his. Um, wow. It's really powerful because again, he has like a strong sternocleidomastoid master there. The other one is being relaxed because it's not really being in use. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and then you can see the bulging of this, this peclitoris muscle right here and the deltoid the three heads very clear. And they also, you know, let me pull out some of the annotation. Annotation. And by the way, you know, uh, I actually recommend sculpting uh, even as a 2D artist because it helps you understand the forms but you can see like this is like a very clear gesture right like you yeah. can tell like it's all it's all pretty clear and then you can see here like where i believe it's like the radius or the ulna you know you can mm -hmm. see that bone and then you can see how then the muscles are coming off of the humerus and the radius and the ulna and here they come again here's the bone you know yeah and so you know when you when you were painting your forms and your design before for the class which you again i'm very proud of what you've done um but it, it definitely explains a lot why it's so much of a challenge because perhaps you felt like you were getting a good sense of forms and structure from your 3d designs uh -huh. um but the reality is like it, they're, it's not there at least this it was um not implied so you look so we think about like the strong strong uh cheekbone right that we got out of this guy right here right mm -hmm. and we look at your guys's cheekbone right it's just like a whoop, little bump and then you just kind of like gloss over it yeah he's a lead character artist at facebook didn't know facebook had a lead character artist is he he used to work at ilm but i think it's because he's like uh he, he's working off of the Oculus um, medium, right? So he's like really good at like like sculpting in VR. And so I think that's why he's working over there. Yeah, I think I think this actually was done in in uh, medium. Yeah, see, Oculus medium. So he, he, he used a, hey, let's watch this for a second. Let's mute this. Uh, so he took a, a Carl Swante design, which is already really cool. Oh, yeah, this is cool. And this is all done in VR. And so he was just showing like the, the power of VR sculpting. And he talks about like how it's really amazing. It feels like traditional sculpting. Have you done any of that? Have you done VR? No, I haven't done VR sculpting. I, I think that makes the most sense. I actually, when I started messing with VR tools, I realized that VR makes the most sense actually as a, um, as a production tool rather than an entertainment device. Mm -hmm. um, and they should put all their money and time into that. It's like Maya, you know, like yeah. well, people who don't like watch entertainment don't just use Maya, only people who make entertainment, you know, and so they can charge like three thousand, four thousand dollars easily. No problem. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you, if you um, do this with Oculus, then you can like have people afford the types of machines and stuff that they would need to create um, these cool things in the Oculus Medium. This is also done in Medium. So have you tested it out? Like have you been, have you used it ever? No, that's what I'm saying. I haven't used it. Okay. I just realized that it's definitely a tool. Uh -huh. It's like best for, for tools than it is for anything else. Sure. My point is, is that like, he's already a, he was already a great sculptor before medium came out sure and so then like when medium came out he just sculpted like really well in medium you know what i mean yeah, and, yeah. um because he already understands anatomy like if you ever listen to him talk he really talks about it uh like he understands it so i'm going to send you him 
I used to look at uh, Aries and stuff too. Like uh-huh. if you're looking, if you're looking for like people that are like best in the game, dude. That's what I want. Yeah. These are these are people who do it conceptually as well as um, what you call it, as well as just being really good sculptors. But yeah, if you want to look at someone who does a really good combination of both, he's a great painter and great artist and great sculptor. Uh, Peter Kina Kina is the guy you want to look at. But again, he doesn't suffer from the lack of structure and the muscles and anatomy. He's he's really good at anatomy. He's really good at drawing and painting. Like this is drawing, and I think this is a painting he did. Wow! You know, yeah. uh, this is like a model that he made, and then he did a paint over on it. You know, so this is this is kind of like a guy that I think you would really admire. You yeah, know, absolutely. yeah, thanks. Um, and a good place to start but like if you really want to get that structure you, you gotta like at people like this dude mm-hmm. yeah this is cool stuff um yeah i just installed zbrush so let's let's do some zbrush demos fantastic just for a second um let me close photoshop this will be a hug though let me close some of these other things chrome get out of here hold on let me put this out of the way. Um, yeah, but my advice would be to fix this type of stuff. So let me let me demonstrate and then kind of jump into a Q&A at the same time. <laughs> Hold on just a second. All right. Uh, I just installed it, so I didn't have time to set up my workspace i should definitely save it it's, it's always like a in a rare occasion where i i make adjustments to this but let's let's at least just get the hotkeys uh, a couple of the hotkeys into into place so first i need to get the first brush this one right here it didn't work always there you go, that worked. And then two is trim dynamics. They keep adding brushes on it. They're gonna eventually run out of <laughs> space, man. <laughs> Take it easy. Um, three is damn standard. No, I didn't get it. There you go. And then four, I forget what four is for me. But that's all I'll need. Um, I think it's one of these. Let's let's see. Let's test it out first. Do you like clay buildup? Well, I don't know. No, no I think it is clay. I think it's clay. Because I, I I always get confused between clay tubes, clay buildup. Yeah, not clay buildup. Not F clay buildup. <laughs> it's definitely not. Yeah, it's either clay tubes or clay. It's those. The reason why I don't like clay uh, buildup. Because clay buildup makes messes up with um, secondary forms. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, it messes with primary forms, and you don't want to do that. You want to, if you want to really mess with it, you you should always look at clay buildup as a primary form builder, not a not a, like a secondary or a tertiary form builder. Because it's like you know when I tell you guys like you know you, you want to get your values right, right? It's like the same problem. Mm-hmm with clay buildup. Um, but I, I definitely use a clay. Let's let's just make clay tubes for now. All right. Yeah, because it doesn't build up. I can push down hard and it just, it'll build up if I want it to, right? It doesn't keep building if I keep holding it down. Like it will do like a surface level buildup, which is what I want. All right, so um, I have to get adjusted to the, the interface because I've been doing a lot of 3D coat. So let me try to get back into the groove of it, yeah. Um, So whenever I sculpt, it's very much like, um, it's very much like when I paint, which is very like fundamental stuff, right? It's all about getting those those large forms. And I'm all about what's the most effective tool to get to the, the results that I want. And this, as you can tell, 
is going to be pretty effective. And I don't use a smooth tool to get my forms. Like people usually use smooth. I use the trim dynamics to get my forms. Okay. Yeah. And then I use damn standard to help me like create secondary forms while I'm designing the primary ones. So then let's like get like the zygomatic arc in there. And with the, and then I try to chisel that out, try to build that form up. You know, but yeah. keep it at a very like core level. Okay. And then we're going to try to get rid of this um, putty muscle looking stuff, you know, and also we have to give very clear silhouettes. So you'll notice the same thing as when I draw, right? I'm zoomed far away. I'm paying attention to the shapes, right? So right mm -hmm. now, like this is kind of what I'm wanting to, ex or what I'm expecting to try to get out of this. I'm trying, I'm going to probably do this. I'm going to try to do what, 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 what? right? Maybe something mm -hmm. like that. In fact, <laughs> I just realized this is actually not a bad, um, it's not a bad thing to do <laughs> is to use the annotation tool. <laughs> and now I'm like thinking, there's a there's a tool called Epic Pen. Epic Pen. And I used to use it when I didn't have um, annotation available to me. Oh, now they charge you money, 20 bucks. I might have to spend it. But you can draw on the screen, right? It's meant to draw on the screen, okay? And so now I'm thinking like, like this is pretty valuable to be able to like just draw right over. And so I can like get to um, my proportions that I would normally want to draw in. It's just harder to do it when you're dealing with 3D. You know? Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, because then I can do something like this too. Check that. I can do um, I can do a different color and then I can draw I guess it won't let me do it. Here, let me try this. No, oh, there you go. Then I imagine the there no actually there's a there's an easier way. I don't need to get the thing. I can just use Photoshop. No, no, no. Photoshop's still harder. Anyway. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. So you use annotation tool, is that what you said? Yeah. But like you can use whatever screen drawing app uh -huh. to potentially do what I'm doing here, but I usually just do it by like seeing it, right? Like looking sure, at yeah. my eye. Uh, but this definitely will save me time. It's like using uh, uh, my primary skill to help supplement my secondary skill, which is 3D. You know? Yeah. Shoot, this is a great idea. Anyway. That's cool. Uh, let me clear all the drawings. Okay, so uh, now I feel pretty confident at least the silhouette from the side looks good. You know, uh -huh. and so then now we got to look at the front and see what monstrosity I just made, but it's okay. It's not actually not that bad. So you keep it real planar, then you don't. You, your primary form is kind of real planar in the beginning. Yeah. So you know when I was talking to um, Will about like having, like it's always fundamentals, sure. right? It's always something fundamental that screws up everything, and when I say that, people just think, yeah, yeah, AJ, that's what you just have to say because you're a teacher, <laughs> you know? And that's what all the teachers say. All the teachers say it's fundamentals, fundamentals, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. blah, blah, blah. But it's, there's a very, very clear reason because it's true, you know? Yeah. And so, like, oh, you can see right here, like, I'm building the zygomatic arc so that it is a smooth as it possibly can all the way up. You see that? Mm -hmm. Like there's like I try to build no lumps at all. 
that it's just this one long stretching form. And if I'm going to, if I'm going to um, bring it in, because I have to, I have to bring it in all the way from the top too. So that gesture line is always consistent. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then I can start to like, you know, obviously using masks is like game over. So one of the main reasons why I think ZBrush is still a great sculpting tool is why I don't, I, I reinstalled it because I started getting deep into sculpting again. And then I'm like, ah, oh, dude, I can't sculpt it. It's just, it's just not faster in uh, 3D coat. I wish it was, I love 3D coat. I wish I wouldn't have to leave, but I definitely have to leave. Uh, the solution for me though, is just make um, ZBrush even more intuitive to start to really get better at uh, making ZBrush that tool for me. Anyway, you know, cre creating the trapezes, the trapezoid, I mean, and creating that muscle so it's not like bent, you know, like it actually goes up continuously, right? It's just really yoked. And that's the problem that I see uh, whenever I see people sculpting, they tend to create too many lumps. See, there's too many lumps in mine right now too. And so you gotta yeah. like, you gotta like straighten that out. And then using um, trip di trim dynamics instead of smoothing, trim dynamics will do a better job of straightening it out. Smoothing just, it, it takes all of the, the, it takes all of the, all the garbage and just averages where their position should be next. Right. Okay. So let me show you a good example of why that's bad. I didn't think about using the trim dynamic to smooth things out. That's a good idea. Well, like you, you, you have to think about the solution you're trying to solve, right? Mm -hmm. The solution you're trying to solve is not um, that you want to average the normals or the planes. You want to like create strong planes. Right. Right. And you just want to smooth that out at the same time. And Trim Dynamics does that. So like, imagine that like you have something like this. All right, let me try to create like. Some sort of fascinating. Okay. So you got like this crazy looking shape, right? Mm -hmm. And like maybe you accidentally you know, pulled some things out like that, right? And so you want to smooth that out. Yeah, that's the intention. Okay. So you, you when you smooth, and actually, let me do something. Let me pull some more out here. Okay. And so you, you see all that, right? Right. So you're like, okay, well, I want to smooth that out. So then you, you grab all the faces with the brush, right? And then you, you smooth. Whoops. I'll take it. Right. Try to smooth it out. Okay. But look what happens. Look at how it messed the feng shui there, right? Yeah, your faces are kind of weird. Yeah, so then it's like, oh, well, then let's smooth this out. You see how this is going to become a problem, right? Mm -hmm. See, now you're really jinking it up. It's, uh -huh. it's similar to like um, whenever people are painting and then they paint like over and over on the same line. Right, like as if you're drawing instead of painting. Uh -huh. You know, like when you're like, okay, I'm gonna draw this thing and then people paint like this. And it's all sloppy and they're like, oh wait, let me correct that. But then they, the way that they clean up is also sloppy. So it's just constantly, you know? Go in there, yeah. <laughs> so that, so imagine that's like the equivalent version whenever you smooth, right? So if mm -hmm. I smooth, look what's happened. It's uh, you know, yeah. all of my garbage or all of my forms that I really worked hard to try to maintain and then I have to build them in again. And so what ends up happening is that you do this and then you smooth and you see what it's going to get worse. Uh-huh. Yep. That's but, but if you're like, okay, no, I want to like, I just want to like sharpen this edge here. Trim dynamics is your main, you know? That's very helpful. Thank you. And then, and then you're like, okay, well this edge right here is definitely, I don't want it to be that hard. Then it's like a careful precision, like smoothing. 
slight right. easing of the sharpness. Yeah, there. because we're 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 trying to maintain the perception of that sharp turn. Mm -hmm. We do want it to be more rounded. It's not that sharp, you know. Right. But the trend dynamics keeps you honest. It keeps you like relatively where you want to be, you know. And uh, again, like why I like using the um, what you call it. Um, what you what you call this brush uh the clay tubes brush for like detailing and maybe actual sculpting is because it, it's surface level changes and it's it's a little bit more controlled you know but once you have like your your forms right like once you get these forms throwing in detail is actually not too challenging I'm not working with a lot of resolution here. So let me get a little bit more resolution. I need to change my setup. But anyway, let's do let's do double 128. There you go. And we gotta keep project on. The guy in schoolism videos never spoke of trim dynamics. <laughs> no, he did not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, everyone has their process. I think some people like just noodle everything in. Uh, I like to use trim dynamics. I think, I think I went too soon to the details, actually, to be honest. But I just want to kind of like do a little quick um, scope. Yeah, I get that. Get the idea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm so used to what you call it. Um, um, Freaking, uh, what you call it, uh, 3D coat. You think it's worth the time to? I mean, I I know a little bit of 3D coat, but nowhere near how I know ZBrush. Is, is it? Should I spend some time on 3D coat or not? Yeah, not really. absolutely. If you can afford getting it, I would say get it. It's it's an evolving tool, just like ZBrush. Mm -hmm. Much younger, but it's definitely super competitive, and it's really underrated. Even to this day, people still underrate it, but it's it's really powerful tool. I use it for a lot of stuff. It's my favorite 3D software. But yeah, see now I can actually like throw some details up in this thing. It's looking fine because mm -hmm. now like I, my forms are, are solid, right? That's the main right. point. My silhouette and my forms. I think I could do a better job of the the traps here, but you know, uh, again, it's just demonstration. I'm not trying to win any ZBrush awards here. You know? Yeah. Yeah, so Trend Dynamics is great. Um, another really good brush for like cleaning up your mess is the Polish brush. And I just press B and H. Usually B, H, H Polish. Mm -hmm. B, let me see. If I just press H, it just immediately does it, but it's called H polish. I don't know what the H stands for. Hero polish. <laughs> um, it's an alphabetic order. I don't know why I have a hard time. H I H I right here. H polish. And it works very similar to trim dynamics, but it's also it also softens round corners better too. It's what I would consider like the smudge tool in Photoshop. It's like a, it's a soft blend. See that? Nice. Yeah. It's even better than just smoothing it. I feel like smoothing is a lie <laughs> and nobody should ever use it unless they're really smoothing out like hyper details, you know? Yeah. I, I almost only use it for like organic forms. Like I'll do something like this and then I'll smooth that real quick. Right. But even then, like, watch, I'll do another one. And then we'll press BH. And then I'll smooth that in with uh, the H polish. You kind of get something similar, man. Nah, no, nah, they're definitely, that's the reason why you should definitely use it. It's for like getting more organic, rounded, like more, more spherical type uh, smoothness. Mm -hmm. But if you if you're making everything like a spherical smoothness, that's the problem that I was trying to right. Out. Then everything just feels really bumpy. I gotcha. Sorry about that. 
Yeah, because then you can kind of go in here and start cross hatching details to smooth out. And but even smoothing here should be, you know, very temperamental. But you know, I, I actually love to go back and forth between 3D coat and ZBrush. Because sometimes I'm like, okay, you know, I'm going to um, design my character uh, outside of ZBrush and then I, I'll just like sculpt it in ZBrush. Mm -hmm. And then uh, like I'll do like a quick sketch of it and then I'll just go to town uh, in 3D coat with like finishing it and making it like a cool looking render. Okay, that's a good idea. Yeah, it looks like the bird from the Procreo video. I always draw these types of creatures, so I'm not too shocked. <laughs> but I mean, even after looking at some of the um, stuff that I saw from um, my buddy uh, Geo, I'm thinking like, oh, dude, I need to get back into it. Got to get back into this. Anyway. Right on. This helps you out. It absolutely does. And I just want to say thank you again for all your help. You've really helped me in just my process and everything. So thank you so much. Absolutely, dude. Yeah, man. Uh, it's my honor. All right. And I'll be I'll be back around once uh, once I practice for six months or so. <laughs> All right, man. I'll see you then. All right. Yeah, I should stop. Now I'm getting noodly and doodly. Yeah. So we'll just stop it here. But sometimes what I'll do is I would actually um, take this and and paint on top of it. So why don't we do that? Let me get some, let me see if the perspective view, it's not too bad. The BPR rendering is not always great. But anyhow, does anyone have any questions? Uh, I don't know if it's a good question, but I was wondering about the cropping image. I'm never exactly sure uh, who I should crop a, a finished image. Uh, you're not sure where to, when to crop the image? Uh, well, if I have a character, do I need to leave how much space I leave around it or uh, stuff like that? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I wouldn't worry about it too much. As long as the character is somewhat in view. Um, okay. Like, I like to just kind of keep it relatively even all the way through. Yeah, I try to center it a bit with the cropping tool. Whatever. Yeah, like a little bit of here, a little bit of there, you know, so it's like a good amount of space all around. All right, let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do with this. Yeah, an enemy wasn't that great. But that's because uh, I was doing just a bust. Normally, it's easier for me to get the anatomy right if I start really primary. But let's give this guy like a black coat because all my characters have to wear some sort of black cloak. All right. Any other questions? I'm going to end the class pretty soon. <laughs> Spent too much time talking about ZBrush. But at least you guys learned something. Yeah, I am. Um, like, I always look at people who are much better than me at the very things I want to get good at. I always tell you guys to do that, too. Um, it's because, you know, for me it's very clear that these are goals that I'm trying to acquire. And I think for other people, sometimes what ends up happening instead is that they feel like, Oh my God, it's overwhelming. Like, how am I going to get that good? And it's just always the right, wrong attitude because they weren't always that good either. You know, the only difference between you and them 
is that they have more of an expertise because of that um, time that they invested earlier in their career. You just didn't do it. Uh, I know this very well, so then I don't really get discouraged. I know very well why they're demolishing me um, in said field. And to get caught up in that field, I have to, to put some time and effort into it. And so, um, you know, for me, learning ZBrush was not just a, oh, I better learn ZBrush because, you know, I'm going to be a 3D artist one day. It's like, no, I learned it because I wanted to be really good character artist and ZBrush is clearly a great tool to make good characters so that's that's why I always encourage people to learn 3D and uh, other stuff as well just so you can expand your your skills so there's there's always a solution to uh, multiple problems or there's multiple solutions to one single problem Like, I forget what I was doing the other day where I was just like, oh, man, it's crazy how, like, it just keeps adding on the knowledge, man. Uh, I think it was, like, the shader stuff. And I was like, as I was learning it, I was like, man, it's crazy that I already know somewhat of how programming works, how this has now become so much easier to digest. Before, it was so much more, it was so much more challenging, but now it's not. And I'm just like, wow, it's crazy. Because, again, it used to be, it used to be way more complex. like understanding shading and stuff. I have a question. What the? <laughs> Did you just went outside and smoked a full cigar out of yourself right now? What's going on with that voice, lady? <laughs> and an old witch woman. <laughs> you just come back. <laughs> I have a question. Sorry, I don't, I don't mean to make fun of you. It's just so different than what you usually sound like. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah, I should probably rest. But um, I have been, like, I want to post things on social media and build a portfolio. But I never know, like, when something's finished enough to do that. So I end up never doing it because I don't think anything's finished. You, you should just do it uh, in... And get in the habit of doing it. I tell I tell people to post often, even if it's nothing that they're proud of, because um, especially when they first starting out, like it's okay. Because you know, it's not like when you finally post, you've built like the amazing portfolio. <laughs> you know, <laughs> sometimes that might happen, but usually it's just better just to keep posting often. You know, and what you do instead, what you're what you're training yourself to do is to get really good at um, just posting often. You know, I post as often as I can, even if I don't like what I've posted sometimes um, because I'm just in the habit of posting. You know, some things do better than others. Some things do really good, other things don't, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I, I always encourage people to do very much the posting just as a way to practice, just like I teach you guys how to practice all sorts of other things. It's another one of those things that you should be practicing. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. Uh, so, so even if, like, let's say I spent an evening on it, and I know I'm not going to do much else with it, you'd recommend just posting it, even if. Yeah, just like you said, get in the habit of it, and what it did for me, it might not do it for you, but just just so you know how I felt when I did it. It made me um, feel like oh, I needed to post again because my other painting was just kind of garbage. And so I just mm -hmm. kept on like trying to replace the last thing people saw. <laughs> <laughs> and as a consequence, I got better and better and better and, you know, so on and so forth. Yeah. So like if anything, it just helps you. Um, it just helps you just push your work out there. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you don't feel comfortable, you don't have to. But what you can try to do is maybe make deadlines, like give yourself like a week and whatever the results are, just do it anyway, you know, mm -hmm. or give yourself some clear goals like this. Uh, that's helpful. Yeah, thanks. That's great. Yeah. Um, if you don't want to post it like on your art station, maybe you're just saving it for when you actually feel like you have good work. 
or something like this. Um, tried like blogs or other places uh, like Facebook's fine because it just kind of like disappears. Yeah, I was thinking of doing Instagram. Yeah, Instagram, like these types of social networks, Twitters, because they just kind of like vanish, you know? <laughs> I mean, like Instagram, it's still there, but like it vanishes, you know what I mean? Like it's really, especially if you're posting all sorts of things on Instagram, it definitely just disappears. Cool, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. All right, I'll take another question and then I'm going to call us a day's. Uh, I'm wondering about the portfolio. Is it a good idea to have uh, maybe a zebra sc uh, skirt? And also, uh, should I have more uh, normal, uh, standard, more boring design? Um, the zebra thing, it doesn't matter. Um, you should just have good work, right? It shouldn't matter if it's ZBrush or whatever. Like when we were looking at the Peter Koenig guy, it doesn't really matter, right? Like all his work's just really good. And just some of it happens to be sculpted, some of it isn't, you know? Um, but to the other one, yeah, you should actually have like artwork that's just kind of like whatever uh, most people would expect, you know? Um, that I think is always not a bad idea, right? Uh, because especially when you're first starting out, because you want to build some reputation for like that you can do some basic stuff as well. You know? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, but I, I wouldn't advise against it. I think it's a good idea. I, I think it's best to have both. Have stuff that's yours and have stuff that's a little bit of what um, uh, people would expect. There you go. Creepsters. Good old creepsters. And Donskis. Yeah, you can see again like how I use 3D not just as like a like I actually use it as a great tool to help me make better paintings too. It's not just a cheap parlor trick. You know? It's actually a very useful tool. And I used to do a lot of uh, stuff like this for some projects. Uh, not anymore, just because I don't really feel the need to. Uh, but there is some advantage of just like getting like just something really, um, really strong in 3D and then painting over it. Like you just get so much for free. Um, what you don't get for free is you, you, you have more drawings, drawings out of it, if you know what I mean. Like, cause I could turn this person's head, not anymore, I didn't save it, but I can turn the model's head and do another painting from a different angle, you know? Y'all ready for end game? I take the silence as half of you guys were just snapped out of existence just now. <laughs> All right. Cool beans. I'm going to end it now for show. All right, friendos. I'm probably going to keep painting on this dude, but not today. You guys will see the rest of it later. Let me go to... What the? Where is it? What the? Where did it go? Hmm. Oh, I guess it's in here. It's a weird spot to put it. I'm not sure why I put it there. Anyway. Cool. It was nice. 
Yeah, it was a great time. I appreciate everybody's effort and everyone's good hard work. You guys are killer. You guys are awesome. Keep it up. Stay friends. Don't be strangers. And uh, I'll see you guys when I see you guys. It was an amazing class. It was my honor. And you guys have a great journey ahead of you. Latest friends. And peace Thanks. out. Thanks. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.